Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Lone Depot Park. Thank you for joining us today as we introduce the 17th manager in franchise history. Before we begin, I do want to recognize a few individuals that are here joining us. Marlins Chairman and Principal Owner Bruce Sherman. Marlins President of Business Operations, Caroline O'Connor. We also have the Assistant General Manager for the Marlins, Gabe Kapler and Brian Shannon. And joining us from North Carolina, as well as Jupiter, Florida, we have the McCullough family. We'd like to recognize his wife, Jill, his three children, Kyle, Quinn, and Carson. From, from North Carolina, we have Howard and Ava, his parents. and his father-in-law, Jim. And now I'd like to welcome Marlins Chairman Pritz Boner, Bruce Sherman. Welcome everybody, it's a great day for the Miami Marlins. I'm really excited to be here, of course. Um, Clayton McCullough, what an exhaustive process you went through um, and uh, I don't want an 18th manager, I want a 17th manager to stay for many, many years. And based on the process we went through, we think it's just an exciting and wonderful fit. I'd like to also welcome his lovely family. And uh, one of the bonuses we get is Clayton has lived in Jupiter, Florida for the last 10 years. That makes it special. Um, what stood out for me was, uh, in my interview process with Clayton, was his character, his teamwork, uh, the fact that he won a ring last year with the Dodgers, not lost on us, but he's seen character, he's seen team building, and he's even seen it throughout his extensive minor league career, both as a player and a coach. He had a winning record and uh, two championships in the minor league, six out of seven years, and that's pretty extraordinary. And uh, he just clearly stood out uh, from all the candidates we interviewed, so just really wonderful to have him here. Um, I think the most important aspect for, for our organization is everything we're trying to do in the front office. It's about one team and seamless and sustainable between the front office and the coaching staff. The players, the 270 players in the system, we want seamlessness between the front office and the coaching staff. And with Peter, and with Clayton, I know we're going to have that. And I'm really excited about the prospects that brings to the Miami Marlins. Um, we're going to continue to get better every day. Um, there's some fans here. We're all fans uh, besides employees and observers and media. And I'm really excited. I've never seen the organization do what it's doing now. Um, most people don't see it on the outside. But the amount of focus and the amount of talent that we're bringing to the front office is enormous. We're not only bringing numbers of people, high quality people, we're bringing new technology to the front office, we're bringing uh, improvements to the clubhouse, we're spending a lot of money and a lot of effort in things that don't see, you don't see. So we're really happy as an ownership group to be bringing that to the city of Miami and all of South Florida. So with that, I'm really excited about Clayton and I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Peter and Clayton. Thank you. Sorry, I know I was a little bit late there yeah. to, the, uh, to the party. Sorry, Bruce. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm incredibly excited to be on this stage to welcome Clayton uh, as the new manager of the Miami Marlins. I think he's a perfect fit for everything that we're building. He's a perfect fit for our culture perfect fit for how much we're trying to care about people, develop players, and for winning. And ultimately, this comes down to winning, and, and Clayton's a winner. He's won throughout his entire career, um, and so to have him here alongside me is an incredibly exciting day for the whole Marlins organization. I want to thank Bruce for all of his support over the last year since I got here, for the investment that he's given this whole organization to build things the right way. And that next step is, is happening today with Clayton, and we're all just incredibly excited.
86. 86. Twice per year. This feels good. Uh, <laughs> uh, first, want to thank Bruce, uh, ownership certainly for uh, this, Peter, uh, the entire baseball operations team for entrusting me with the responsibility of becoming uh, the next Miami Marlins manager. Um, and I think the, the path to get here to this destination is not one that I certainly walked alone. Uh, there's so many former colleagues, uh, staff members, players. Uh, but I'd love to have the chance to thank individually. There's just there's just too many. Um, so for all those you know have worked with, can't thank them enough for uh, all the time they spent shaping me, uh, all the time they spent sharpening me, all the time they spent helping me learn and grow. Um, so the beautiful part about this game, as we know, is the people that you come in contact with, those types of interactions. And I've been very blessed and fortunate to have some great mentors uh, that have helped me, you know, uh, arrive at this point today. I have my mom and dad here, Howard and Eva. My mom was a school teacher, um, retired school teacher a number of years. Mom, thank you. you, you taught me care, you taught me empathy, um, and all the times you drove me around from one activity, one game to the next and sacrificed, uh, I thank you for that. And my dad, Howard, um, longtime baseball coach, scout, uh, the love of the game, my love of the game started at a young age, running around Bosch Hammer Stadium, University of North Carolina, while my dad was there. Uh, and then just watching how you went about um, all your years as a professional dad, the, the, the hard work, um, the character, I think what's made me most proud is, is I come in contact and interact with those that worked alongside you, with you, is how glowing they spoke about you as a person and character, so I know those things have always been extremely important to me, and I thank you both for, um, you know, always being there and, and for all your support. We have, we have our three children here, Carson, Kyle, and Quinn, um, my beautiful wife, Jill. Jill, um, thank you. You've, uh, you're the rock of our, our family. You'd make me a, a better husband, um, a better father each day. Can't thank you enough. The sacrifices that go on at home, uh, we all know in this profession, the amount of time we spend away from our loved ones, um, those that are kind of at home having to, to carry on and, and keep things together. Uh, so Jill, I could not have a better partner in this. Uh, I very, very much look forward to us starting this new chapter, you know, together here um, with Miami. Uh, but, you know, Jilly, Love you and can't thank you enough. Um, and you know, I think you know, uh, it's been a short time so far, but for you know everyone in the organization that's come out has been so welcoming. Um, initially, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you know, change is not always easy. Change is necessary. Some you know at times, and um, the support uh, I've gotten initially has been overwhelming. It's much appreciated um, for my family and I as we as we take this on and, and just getting to get a, a very small glimpse so far in the amount of work that's been done, um, the work that is ongoing, only excites me more about this opportunity and what we have ahead here in Miami. Uh, I know it's been mentioned a few times, my family and I being South Florida residents, we've called Jupiter home for 10 years. Uh, kind of ironically enough, we, we moved to Jupiter and then I think it was six weeks later, Got a job with another organization that couldn't have been further away from our home base, but we've kind of come full circle now. Uh, we're back at home and look forward to, um, you know, I mean, having a chance to do this kind of for your hometown team and for a lot of our friends and family and make South Florida you know, proud of, uh, of what we have going on here. So to be home just kind of was, wasn't the reason, but it's certainly a nice, you know, kind of cherry on top for, um, for this opportunity for me. So I just say, I couldn't be more grateful for this I'll just try to work as hard as I can each day to make you know those in this organization proud, and I look forward to hopefully being a, a great teammate for for all the wonderful people that we have here and those that we're going to bring on board.
All right, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Clayton. We'll now open up the floor to questions. Please wait for the microphone to come to you before asking your question. We'll start with Christina then Nicola from LB.com. Hi, Peter. Welcome, Clayton. Uh, Peter, just what was it? Why is Clayton the right guy at this juncture for the organization? And then, Clayton, you kind of alluded to obviously um, being somewhat of, you know, a local, but, you know, and it is a manager job, but what was it that stood out to you about why you wanted this job? I'll, I'll start with that. Um, Clayton's, who he is as a person, is perfectly aligned with everything that we're trying to build. His humility, his care for people, his work ethic, his desire to win, it's just such a perfect alignment with what we're building, and that became clear very quickly in the process. As we got to know him more deeply, as he spoke with more people, that was just reinforced. And so I think it's just such a, a great connection. We care about the same things. I think he's a fantastic leader. I think he's the right person to, to build this next chapter together. Thank you, Peter. I think the experiences that I've had throughout you know, my time in the minor leagues and player development, opportunity to be on a major league staff, somebody's like, have always thought of and envisioned the potential one day of having this chance to be uh, a major league manager, the, you know, the ultimate leadership position, um, you know, for a uniform staff member in our in our game. And as I, you know, got a chance to meet Peter, talk talk with Peter about um, how he his visions for what was going to be going on here, the importance of culture, the importance of people, um, you know, certainly winning. Uh, it felt right, and with each, each conversation that we had, and as I got to meet more members of the team in the group, uh, it only solidified more that, uh, you know, I knew that this job is something that I wanted, and I wanted to do it with people that I felt great about and would feel um, wonderful rolling up my sleeves with and going to work, and that we would all you know, have the chance to challenge each other and make ourselves better, and it just felt more and more right as I went through it, so couldn't be more ecstatic about having the chance to do it here. We'll continue with Danny. Thank you, John. Hi, Clayton. Daniel Alvarez from Alexa Base. Nice to meet you, Thanks, and welcome. Uh, you've mentioned so many times about the preparation that you want from your players, and you've been through so many interviews for this job uh, in the past and obviously this year. What do you think made you be more prepared from those experiences to accept this now and be ready for a managerial job? I think with, with each opportunity to go through uh, an interview type process, more and more your own what you really believe about your values, the things that are important, uh, need to you know, like solidify and come out, come out more. Uh, and, I, with, and again, with each year as well, um, you know, on Dave Roberts' staff in the major leagues, I think you know, with each year as well as year, uh, I also uh, just became more convicted in the things that I believe were important, and that you'd hope that each time you know you go meet a new group of people, you go through a process like this, that you can be authentic, and that the things that are important to you can shine through. Um, so I, I think some of it was just, you know, you get a chance to just go through on multiple levels and with each time, um, you know, my own beliefs in what was important to me would, would shine through. We're back left with Will. Clay, back here. Uh, welcome to town. It's good to see you. Thank you. Uh, curious about, Peter was mentioning the fit for you. Uh, what kind of manager do you want to be envisioned to be for the players? and? Also, the different styles of winning, where you're coming from an organization that resources-wise can go out and get a big-time player. Here, it's more about the development from the kind of bottom up. What do you think is the fit there and the type of manager you want to be? So, yeah, I hope a year from now, I can look back and say that I'm a stronger leader then than I am today, that I'm looking to continually to grow. Uh, and there's gonna be a lot of tremendous people around me that are going to help in that regard. I, you know, I believe that you know, I want our, our guys to come in each day with the intent to, you know, to win and the, you know, the value and importance of what that, the preparation on the front end of that looks like. And see, my leadership style is about I'm a, a terrific listener, but I have the ability to connect with um, a variety of you know, our players, our staff members, and that I can be a consistent presence each day in the clubhouse and in the dugout and do that through hard work energy and the players believing that they know that have their best interest at the forefront and it being about our players and uh, helping them get better each and every day uh, you know as far as the um, you know, similarities or differences here I, I think it's a lot of different ways to win and there's no guarantee that just because you have 
as I mentioned, you know, a higher payroll or things that that's going to guarantee that you're going to win. See, successful teams are all very much um, committed to the attention to detail. They are committed to their preparation. They're committed to each and every day just kind of taking one step forward, uh, controlling the things that are within their control. Uh, so that's something that we can, you know, um, you know build upon here, and um, that's what is really exciting. We go back right. Craig? Hey, Clayton. Congratulations. Craig Mish, how are you? Thanks, Craig. Uh, Clayton, what is your take on the Marlins' current Major League roster coming up this season? And a uh, follow-up is, have you had a chance to speak to any of the current players that are with the organization? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, exciting, exciting crew of players. There's talent here. Uh, certainly, you know, on the mound, there's always been some real um, arm strength here. There's been some, some talent on the mound. To, you know, get some guys back um, healthy. Uh, the talent floor has been raised so I that part is exciting that there is talent here and look forward to hopefully you know continuing to you know um, have, have our players take a step forward um, and then I have had a chance to connect with some some of our players um, on the major league 40-man roster um, just trying to get away and chip at that a little bit you know as, as the news broke roughly a week ago uh, felt it was important to try to you know, reach out as best I could and start building some of those those connections early on. Right next to Craig Barry. Hi, Clayton. I wondered if you had to ask yourself in this process if you wanted to be involved with a rebuilding team as your first job, why you ultimately decided to take that on, and the qualities you have that you think are compatible with managing young players. You know, I mean, I think at my core, I have always loved player development. And for me, like the major league level, this is less about inexperienced or younger players or veteran players have found that major league players want to be coached they want to get better uh, so I think that is you know somewhat independent of experience level certainly maybe where they're at and um, what is required at a given time um, but that's our that's our job is to figure out and get to know the players that we have on our roster currently um, and figure out what's the best way in which we can support them um, put them first um, figure out their Learning styles, what makes them tick? Because you know, ultimately, our job is to be there for the players and you know, um, elevate and raise their game. Any final questions before we conclude? Thank you. Um, I'd like to address this to Peter, if I could, and and Mr. Sherman, if he'd be agreeable to answer. Um, Peter, you're, you're accustomed to doing more with less from your Tampa years in terms of payroll. Um, you're also in a division now with three other teams that really spend big, Phillies, Mets, and, and Braves. Um, what is the path forward here to beat three big spending teams when you're spending so much less? You know, baseball is, for every team, it's about developing players. It's about taking the players that you have and getting the most that you possibly can out of them at every level. And one of the things we're really excited about Clayton and his experience and his ability is to do that at the major league level. That development does not stop at the major league level. With our young players, with our veteran players, whoever it might be, they need to constantly get better. And if they can continue to get better every year, that will vault the whole, whole organization forward. So really it's that player development, player improvement, and it, it, stop, it doesn't stop at the major league level. Mr. Sherman will be available after the press conference for additional questions. Hi, Clayton. Isaac Azut with Fish on First. I'm curious how the search for the coaching staff is going and if you will be prioritizing sort of guys that have experience either as Ben coach or manager, since obviously this is your first time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's ongoing. Uh, group working hard to have identify some really strong candidates uh, and trying to find just, we feel like, the balance and the right people that help you know, balance each other out, uh, maybe, you know, diversify a uh, particular, you know, uh, group, whether it be the hitting, the pitching, you know, our strength and conditioning, medical, because this is going to take each department working together and as many high quality, driven, curious uh, people that we can bring on board, um, then, you know, I don't know if the experience is going to be the ultimate factor. I think we'll just bake all of that in and trying to find who we feel like are the best candidates right now to help us, you know, move this thing along. All righty, as we conclude the press conference, I do ask for everyone to stay seated. I'm going to call Bruce up to the front of the stage. Clayton and Peter, we're going to do one more photo op in front of the stage for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.